everyone. I'm John Evans. Welcome to another episode of One on One. My guest this week is Walker Jenkins, the former South Brunswick High School star who just became a professional baseball player a few days ago. Walker just signed a contract with the Minnesota Twins, the team that selected him with the fifth overall pick in the recent MLB draft. That deal came with a signing bonus of more than $7.14 million. Now, while most little leaguers dream of making it to the big leagues, that's not enough for Walker Jenkins. He wants more, and judging by his work ethic and determination, he's not going to stop until he gets it. I sat down with Walker on the front porch of his family's home in Oak Island to talk about his baseball journey. I also talked with his parents, Clay and Tana Jenkins, and you're going to hear from them in this episode as they share stories of how determined their son is to be the best. Sunday night, the commissioner says these words. With the fifth pick of the 2023 MLB draft, the Minnesota Twins select Walker Jenkins, an outfielder from South Brunswick High School in Southport, North Carolina. After all the swings, all the practices, all the work that you put in, take me back to that second and what ran through your mind. It was, it was really, really enjoyable. Um, it was rewarding for not only me, but I think my family and my friends and everyone that's been there with me throughout the process. Um, it's surreal. It still feels surreal. It feels like it's just a, I still feel like I'm a little kid that's just playing baseball. So I, it's almost undescribable, the type of feeling you get, the, the joy that comes from it. Um, but the best way to, to describe it is rewarding. My heart was pounding, to be quite honest. I didn't know um, what to expect or how I was going to feel, um, but excitement and just overjoyed and then relieved once his name was called that we were like, he actually called his name. Like This is just amazing that this, my son's name was just called on national TV for the draft. Um, just full of emotion. I would have thought you would have hoped for that to happen at some point. You would have hoped to have heard those words. Did it meet what you were hoping? For sure, yes sir. It's a, it's a situation where like, you know, obviously my ultimate goal is I want to be the, the best to ever play, but that's one of those stepping stone goals along the way, you know, that you have to get this one done first to get to the next one. So it was, it was, it was incredible. I'm one of those who I've always felt that I wasn't the best writer or wasn't the best reporter. So I've always felt like I had to outwork everybody, me personally. Has there been something you've wanted to prove from the time you picked up your first baseball bat? I wouldn't say there's ever been anything I've wanted to prove from the start. I've just always wanted to be the best. Um, I'm extremely competitive in everything I do and you know baseball's at the top and so it's one of those situations where if I'm not the best I'm not satisfied and even when I am the best I, need, I can get better and so it's a situation where I can I always know I can improve and can get better and there's someone that's always going to be chasing me and someone I can always chase and so that's a situation where I'm always going to continue to work and, and do everything I can do to get better. So if I played you in checkers or chess or cards, you're going to be just as intense on the checkerboard as you are on the baseball diamond? If I lose, I'm going to be mad. <laughs> <laughs> and pickleball too? Oh, serious. Very serious. Tell me about that pickleball. I heard you tried to pick it up for a little bit. So, I mean, I'm still playing. I'm going and playing tonight. So it's, uh, I started when, you know, COVID hit and couldn't do anything and so, you know, pickleball, you're spread out a little bit. You can still get outside, be active. And my friends and a lot of us started just picking it up and started playing. And I went out there, and some of them had started started going at it before me. And, man, first day I went out there, it was not good. And I was like, I couldn't – I was hitting the ball too hard, um, too soft, couldn't really figure it out. I was mad when I got <laughs> home. I was done playing. I got mad. The first time he went out and played and got – killed by it was a whole group it was during COVID and all the kids were going out and playing some of the teachers and he walked in the door and was not happy because he'd got beat and he went back out next couple nights they were playing pretty got regular and one of the teachers he texted me and was like did Walker go home and like practice all night because he came back like a beast on the pickleball court you know he was like what I don't understand how did he I was like I think he just I, I don't know really learned the 
and thought about it. I don't know because he, it was pretty funny to me that they were, um, but that's just how we, he works. He doesn't like to lose, that's for sure. The next day I came out and I had a feel for it a little bit and actually did pretty decent. Um, and it was kind of one of those things that, you know, kind of like golf for me. I'm not very good at it. And pickleball was the same way at the start. I was not very good at it at the start. It's like, all right, I've got to get better at this. I'm, I'm, I'm going to beat everybody else at this. And that's, that's just the way I am with things. It's something I'm, I'm good at, I can get better. If it's something I'm not good at, I'm definitely going to get better. Yeah, I, I've gotten that from watching and reading things about you, that you're just an intense kid, no matter what it is you do. Yes, sir. Tie your shoes faster than somebody else, whatever, it doesn't it's, matter. Everything's in competition to me, so... That's funny. What was your senior season like at South Brunswick? Scouts at every game. What was that season like for you? A blur? It went by fast, that's for sure. It's, um, it was really enjoyable, to be honest. Growing up with a lot of the guys that played on that team, getting to finish out my high school career with the same kids that I've grown up with, it's a ton of fun. You know, a lot of them are my best friends, guys that I've known my whole life. Um, I can't, it, it's just, it's amazing that we all stuck together, so many of us, and were able to finish it off like that. Um, but like you said, it's it, it it went by so fast. You know, I feel like it was yesterday that I was I was playing in the playoffs or you know first game of the season. Um, once again, it's one of those situations where I don't even know how to describe it. It's it's just something that you have to kind of experience to know how it feels. Were there conversations though, Walker? Because Obviously, it had to be something for your teammates and some of those friends to see all of these people here paying attention to you. Was that difficult for you in any way? Did you have conversations with your buddies along the way? For sure. I mean, a lot of them asked me about it and wanted to know, you know, what's going on. But I was, I was never the teammate or person to where... You know, I made it all about myself. It was, it's never been that way. I always cared about winning. I never cared who was there to watch, who, who if they were here to watch me, another guy, I'm gonna go do everything I can to help my team win. And, you know, that's the kind of attitude and mindset I took and am always gonna take to the games. And that's the way I treated my teammates. Just like, like I'm any other player, like they're my best friends. You know, I'm not gonna treat them any differently or act any differently around them just because of, of who's there, who is there watching. Um, so, you know, obviously they, they were curious and asked me a lot of questions about what's going on, who's here. You know, I'd fill them in, you know, because obviously there's no reason not to. Um, but in the aspect of them coming to watch me, I never, never cared for that or, or made that, you know, noticed by my teammates or anyone else. I heard you say one time, it's not hard to be a good teammate. Yes, sir. What did you mean by that? It's not hard to treat others how you want to be treated. Um, that's one of the biggest things that I, I've grown up and with my family and have learned. You know, it's not hard to treat others how you want to be treated. It's really not. Just to, to be kind to others, be a good teammate, a role model, a leader. Um, you know, it's very rewarding to, to be that way and, and then for them to treat you the same way back. So it, it's never been something that's difficult for me. You've had a lot of success making the uh, U.S. National 18 and under team Gatorade Player of the Year in 2022. You have 24 and three with your high school friends and you go all the way to that last game. Yes, sir. Knowing how competitive you are, how tough was that? How tough was coming up that oh so short? It's extremely tough, you know, especially uh, in a team sport like that, there's only so much you can do. Uh, you know, I gave it my all. I know my teammates gave it their all. It's a it's just a, a situation where that day, you know, we weren't the best team. And now overall, I obviously think we were better than the other team, but we didn't show it that day and it happens. That's baseball. Um, does it hurt any less? No. Um, <laughs> does it make me any less angry? No. Right. Um, but you can learn from it, um, accept the failures, let them motivate you, move on and do better. So that's what I try to do and the way I try to embrace it and, and look at it. Has baseball always been easy for you? It's always some, something I think I've picked up easier than others, but you know, I've put in a lot of hard work to, to get to where I'm at and have been extremely blessed with, with many things to get to where I'm at. Who pushed you to, to grow and love the sport? Is there somebody you look at, a coach, a mom, dad, somebody in particular? I, I can't say so. You know, my family and, and coaches have always been there for me, and 
and help me with anything that I've needed, but I've, I've kind of always been my own self-motivator and been the person that's pushed myself. There was a little baseball field on Oak Island a block from the beach that we would go to this time of year, July, August, and he'd be begging to go out there and to, for me to hit him ground balls. Tanner would be at first base. He was eight, nine. Yeah, you know, he was young. fielding them. Mm -hmm. I was hitting them. He was fielding them, throwing them to Tanner. Or else we'd be out there um, taking bat practice. And all of his friends and our friends are parked and walking to the beach. And they're like, I can't believe you're making them practice. I'm like, yeah, we're not <laughs> making them practice. I want to go to the beach. You know? <laughs> he, he's begging us to be out here. You know, he gets up even at an early age, and he still does this. First thing in the morning, if not the night before timing out when he's going to practice his baseball. And he did that at, at an early, early age. And people would often think we were the ones pushing mm -hmm. him to be there. And uh, that was not the case at all. Mm -hmm. And I did think he's going to burn out. This is, this is something that he's going to do this so much. And we discussed it. And I told mm -hmm. her, I'm never going to tell him, you need to go practice. But I'm also never going to tell him, I won't go if you want to go. Mm -hmm. if, if work would allow it and we could make it happen, we made it happen. Um, obviously, watching guys older than me, the higher level, college, pro, whatever it may be, I look at them and I'm like, I'm gonna beat that guy, or I wanna beat that guy, and it motivates me, but there's never been a specific person that I've known personally that's you know, pushed me, so to speak. My dad, my mom, my family, my coaches have always just been there to support me and, and help me with whatever I need. Six years old, you didn't make the all-star team. Yes, sir. Is that still something that even now, 12, 13 years later, stings a little bit? For sure. Um, <laughs> we, there's a reason I still tell that story. You know what I mean? I, I've never forgot it. Um, I never will. I think that's kind of where some of that fire and passion for the best started. Um, and it's like, I don't like this feeling of losing, not being the best. You know, I'm, I'm going to change that. So I think it'll always have an impact on the person I am in, in the future and past and present in my life. A, a lot of the greats have had that. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, Michael was cut from his high school team at Laney. Yes, sir. And there's others who, who did it. And it seems like the great ones, the ones that are driven, have that point that starts them in that different direction. And obviously, I take it that's yours. I think there's been, been several. You know, I got cut when I was six. I got cut when I was 13. And I got cut this most recent year. And those are all situations where... They're, they're only motivating factors. And I'm not trying to prove anything for anyone else. I'm trying to prove that I'm the best to myself and want to know that I'm the best in my own head. And that's, that's kind of what I do it for because I'm just a competitive person and, and I'm always going to want to be the best. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think those are great motivators and, and I think you have to have failures to learn how to succeed. You know, those failures are only help me succeed and, and, and be better. When did baseball go from being a sport, a game, to something that you th realized that, hey, maybe I can do this further than just playing at South Brunswick High School or something like that? Is there a time, a game, a moment when you can remember it taking that turn? I, I can't remember a specific moment, sir, but I, I mean, I even remember from that that same six, seven-year-old Walker, I was going around telling people I'm going to be a Major League Baseball player. You know, that that's what I'm going to be. And that's the mindset I've had throughout, and it's never, it's never wavered. And not only has that mindset gone from I'm just going to be an MLB player, but I'm going to be the best. You know, I, and I truly mean that, and that's uh, something that I've always had in my brain. Uh, I've seen guys that I thought loved it, but I had never seen anybody that took it to that level, that, uh, especially at a young age. And I, I often thought when he was younger, well, this this will he'll get tired of this, you know, mm -hmm. girls or trucks or something or school will will take him away from it, and it only increased over time instead mm -hmm. of decreasing. Um, I've never seen anyone chase anything like he has. Most people, me included, played little league or played t-ball or whatever it is think that baseball is just you stand up a guy throws it I try to hit something that's circular with something that's circular mm -hmm. but there's a whole lot more than that there's being able to read a pitcher there's being able to read a batter when you're in the outfield do you remember when you learned something like that about baseball that 
maybe you realized it was more than just if I time it correctly, I can hit the ball over the fence? You know, I've picked up things throughout this whole process. Obviously, as I've gotten older, a lot of them have been more advanced and you critique more and more and more, the better you get and the more you learn. Mm -hmm. um, but I even remember from the youngest, like once again, a uh, really young age, just learning how to, to step straight and see the ball hit the bat. And that, uh, the funny, funny you mentioned that is because as much as I know about the swing, about playing in the outfield, whenever I'm struggling, I always go back to the basics. It's always simplify things because it's a game, like you said, you're hitting a circular ball with a circular bat. <laughs> Probably the most challenging thing in, in all of sports to continuously succeed at. And so what I have to do, I have to remember, go back to what's worked. Go back to the basics. So, I mean, I even remember my dad just teaching me from a young age, see the ball hit the bat, step straight, focus in. And that's, that's something I've taken with me throughout. And, and you know, I'm 18 going on 19 now, and I still use that when I'm struggling and failing. So it's... It's a situation that gets me back to where I need to be and you know I learned that at a really young age and only continue to learn more and more and more. Those other things though that uh, you know I can see a, a pitcher might tip his pitches or mm -hmm. if I see the way a guy's stepping in the box I know that I'm gonna if I play in center field I'm gonna cheat to right because he steps more this way. Does that just become second nature? It does. It's a situation where you know the first thing I'm gonna look at on a pitcher is his hand he changes grip. Second thing, a lot of times you'll pick up on in the dugout, not always your first at bat, if the glove where he holds it changes in his, in his setup. Um, there's many things you can pick up on. The arm slot, the hand motion, the fingers that you're all looking for while you're hitting um, to help pick up on things. Sometimes even the outfielder shifting. You'll notice that and you see him shift full side. Oh, off speed's coming. You know, certain things like that that a lot of people don't think about that I've learned to pick up on and you just notice. Um, then in the outfield, it's the same kind of way. You know, you read swings, you read players, you understand the type of player this is, the power, the pull, if you can use all parts of the field, and you learn that and make adjustments in game, and I think that's one of the biggest things that's allowed me to be successful, making those in-game adjustments, those adjustments when you don't have time to necessarily think. So, <laughs> so I'm thinking back to when I was in the outfield at the age of 12, and I'm thinking, well, two more innings, and I can get that free hot dog and soda after the Little League game. Or i got to go home, i got to do my math home. I mean, it's a different level than what most people remember baseball being. Yes, sir. For sure. That's so funny. Because that's what I, that's what I remember thinking in the outfield. I am breaking down the game. You know, you can't overanalyze it, but you have to, you know, I'm trying to put myself in the best position in the outfield to make the play that ultimately goes back to helping my team win again. When did the invites start to come to you to play in some of the circuits? Then it wasn't just middle school baseball. You know, some of it started going into to high school is when I think things really got serious from outsiders, people besides myself and my family. Um, people really started to notice the type of player that I was and where I could possibly be. Um, so I'd say going into freshman year, I started talking to some very, you know, mid-major D1 schools, Carolina, NC State, ECU, Duke, and began to develop a relationship there, going to camps, going and playing in larger tournaments, showcases, and, and doing things of that sort. The first time we went to a showcase in Georgia, I guess that was after his freshman year, mm -hmm. before his fresh, after his freshman year. Mm, during freshman year. During freshman year, mm -hmm. that was the first time we stepped out into the baseball world with the people that were ranked. He was not ranked. He was relatively unknown at that point, and um, he did really well. And we were flooded with agents and scouts and people, and I didn't even know what language they were talking. I went down there unprepared for what we got into. And at that point I thought, oh, well if, if these are the best people, he's capable of playing with them. But even at that point, my dream for him and hope was that he could play Division I baseball. And um, I don't know when it happened, but at some point it went from it being a dream to realizing uh, he, he's going to do this. You mentioned 13 getting cut. I think if I'm not mistaken I read something where your dad said how hurt you were 
when you found out the reason why you got cut yes, sir. more than just not making it the reason why tell me that story well you know i when i was 13 i had a torn labrum in my hip and was not 100 percent was not myself you know i was still a good ball player was going out and playing well and performing well but was having kind of a nagging kind of aggravating pain and you know I went to the next tryout to make the team the same team that I previously been on and it was the highest level the best of the best teams and had done well the previous year and went to the tryout and thought I thought I did pretty well there um, once again and got an email from the the head scout for that team or organization and said I was being considered for the national team which was the best and then we got a call later on from the same coach that had been coached me and said you're too slow and unathletic and you haven't made any of the teams and went from being considered for the best to not making any and so we're kind of like you know what's what's going on here and then the fact that he claimed that I was too slow and unathletic you know that was one that that stuck with me you know you're, you're gonna say that about me when I'm you know doing better and more athletic than the the kid you're playing in my position mm -hmm. so it's a situation that was that, that stuck with me and I'll never forget it's something that you know it's personal to me I sure. take things personally and that's it helps motivate me and you know burns the bush so to speak so how did you get past that then was it working extra hard or was it making yourself better for the next time I think it's more of a mental thing you know I'm, a, I'm gonna I was gonna work hard regardless you know I'm gonna I'm gonna do my best and work as hard as I can regardless but knowing deep down that someone said that about me it's like oh okay now I'm, I'm gonna prove you wrong and prove to myself that I'm better so it was just a, a mental thing in my head once again that drove me even more and pushed me to be better swimming helped you <laughs> a lot of a lot of people play people Athletes your age will play baseball and basketball, baseball and football, baseball, track and field. But you swam. Yes, sir. You needed it for the procedure that you had, but it almost kind of became, all right, I'm going to be a good swimmer. Yes, sir. And the best at it. How much did that help you? Swimming has been extremely beneficial. You know, in the off season, you're working out, you're, you're moving weight, that kind of pulls everything together. You start to kind of you know, the muscles start to tighten. Swimming kind of pulls everything apart, loosens your body up, allows you to stay flexible, mobile, all those different things and and healthy. You know, and that's the most important part of, of being an athlete. If you can't be on the field, you know, you're not gonna be successful. And so I did that to help get my body in, in shape and prepare me for the upcoming season and, and make sure I was prepared to stay on the field and play as hard as I can and stay healthy. You followed some pretty good company as the Gatorade player. Yes, sir. Mackenzie Gore, Corey Seager, people that have played in the major leagues. Yes, sir. Did you reach out and talk to them at all? Have you talked to some of these people who followed, who you have followed to say, all right, what do I need to do? What's ahead of me here? I have, you know, not, I've spoken to Mackenzie Gore. I haven't asked him those particular questions, but there have been many guys along this process that I've spoken to just to, to understand what's allowed them to be successful. Where have you failed? What do you see in me that I need to do better on? You know, what did McKenzie tell you? McKenzie just, like, he just broke it down to me. I asked him about this high school season. What do you think I need to do? And he is actually just like, you need to go out and hit some home runs. That's, that's what <laughs> okay, he told thanks, me. Thanks, Mac. Appreciate yeah, I was it, like, right? thank you. But, you know, he's just, a, he's kind of the same way I am, just kind of a blue collar, country kind of kid, just, goes out and I think balls out, gives it his all. He does. Yeah. And the one thing I've I, I noticed when I got to know Mackenzie a little bit was his family, like yours, how much the family has really meant to him and grounded him in the process because he's another one who had tons of headlines, yes, tons of people at all his games. And I get the sense like your parents have helped keep you grounded and focused. His parents really did the same thing. Yes, sir. Without a doubt. My parents have been, you know, kind of the supporting beam through me throughout this, this whole process. You know, without them, I wouldn't be where I am today. So it's been, been a huge part of my life. Twins Hall of Famer Michael Kadair coached you in Team USA. Yes, sir. Called you Captain America. Yes, sir. I, it's just a nickname I was given, you know, people 
said I'm a, I'm a bigger kind of guy. Um, kind of remind him of Captain America, the way I act, the way I speak, the way I go about things. So it's kind of the nickname I got from everybody and people just kind of started calling me that. Badge so, of honor? Not yet, but we're working towards it, so. <laughs> Who's giving you the best piece of advice in your baseball side? You know, my granddad, my mom's dad, actually passed away when I was 13 years old. And he told me something once that baseball is 90% mental and 10% physical. And as I've gotten older, I've gotten to learn that that's true more and more and more. That that's something baseball, if you can once again learn how to accept failures and stay out of your own head and have confidence in yourself, you're gonna perform on the field. And so that's some of the best advice I've heard from anybody. You said earlier that ever since that six-year-old when you got cut, that you knew you were going to be a baseball player, an MLB player. Was there ever any time when you got hurt, when you hurt your hand, when you were rehabbing, was there any point in time that you said, you know, maybe there's something else? No, not at all. Not even, not even a, a doubt or a waiver in my mind. No? No, sir. Why commit to UNC? It's my dream school. I grew up in North Carolina, you know, loved it thought the campus was beautiful, but then the coaching staff. I built, I talked to them for over half a year before I committed there and developed a great relationship with the coaching staff. Um, and that was the ultimate, ultimately the reason why I decided to go there, but there's so many factors. The facilities, the baseball history, the academic history, the, the type of university it is, um, all led me to go there. So, I mean, there have been many, numerous factors that or went into the deciding factor of, of deciding to go there. If you go and play pro, will you go there to get a, a, an education and finish later on? I'll have to see. That'll be something where, you know, I think depending on where I am in my life, how things are looking, and I would have no problem going back and, and trying to get a degree. I think that that'd be great. Honestly, if I have nothing else to do and want to do something, once again, to prove to myself, I think that'd be something that'd be challenging. It would be great for me to do. Um, so I'm not sure what I, how I can answer that yet, if I no, would I or if I wouldn't. Yeah. But I mean, it's definitely in the back of my mind that's something I might do in the future. If I have two daughters who went to Carolina. Yes, sir. And they, and both loved it. And both loved it for different reasons. Yes, sir. But I think it's one of those schools that really can, can be a difference maker. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. It's just, there's something about it. You know, it's just, it's got a lot of history. What has mom and dad instilled in you that you value the most? You know, I'd say I've been extremely blessed. You know, there have been a lot of things that I've worked hard for, but that have also gone my way. Um, but to not to forget to thank the people that have helped you get here. You know, the, the good Lord above for blessing me and allowing me to be here. But then also, you know, my family, friends, coaches, just once again, going back to treating people the way you want to be treated, making sure to thank them and appreciate all that they've done for me. And I think that's some of the, the best advice I've had. What does Oak Island and Southport mean to Walker? I love it. Yeah, it's where I grew up. It's always going to have a special place in my heart. Um, but it's more than just about the place. It's about the people that I've grown up with and the people that have surrounded me throughout my life. Um, I think I've said it numerous times, but the community and support group that I've had here backing me and with me throughout this whole process is, is second to none. So I, I can't thank them enough and, and just it's been an absolutely amazing place to grow up and go through this process at. And what is so special about this place? Like I said, I think it's the people. Um, obviously we live in an absolutely beautiful, amazing area but the people is what makes it the place that it is and has made it home for me. Are you so, a beach guy? Are you a surf guy? Are you a water guy, a fisherman? I'm all over the place, man. I'm doing whatever my, my friends are doing and whatever I enjoy. You know, so I'm, some days I'll go to the beach. Some days I'll go out on the boat and fish. Some days I'll just hang out with my buddies. You know, I'm, I'm all over the place. And when you want to turn it off for a half hour mm -hmm. or an hour or an afternoon, what do you do? A lot of times I'll just, I'll hang out with my family, my friends and, and do something else that, that I enjoy. Whether that's just 
sitting down and, and talking with them or going out to eat, going fishing, going hunting, going to the beach, whatever that may be. Just kind of slows your brain down, allows you to just sit back, relax, and have fun. Mm -hmm. Who's the first autograph you ever asked for? And do you still have it? Hmm. First autograph I've asked for. I asked for Coach Trotz at a pretty young age. What about Trot Nixon? He's been a great, absolutely great person to grow up learning the game from. You know, he coached me from 8 to 12, and I think those were some of the biggest developmental years of my life, just learning how to understand the game, being around someone that is also extremely intense and has made it as, as far as you can make it. Um, I, I, I can't give him enough credit either and, and say how beneficial that was for my process and, and being where I am today. In a lot of ways, I see a lot of him in you. Yes, sir. As I see you do interviews, as I see you carry yourself, even walking on the side of a baseball field, I see a lot of him in you. I think to, to get to where he's gotten to, you have to have certain characteristics about you. You know, from what I've heard and actually what I've seen, he's still an extremely competitive, intense man. You know, there, there's, oh, there, there are some things even as a younger kid that you're like, oof, <laughs> you know, he cares. And he's still, uh, I think, just as competitive as he was. Um, and that's something that, you know, sometimes can't be taught to people. And I think that's a factor that I have that just, as I've always had, that has helped me get to where I am. Yeah. When's the first time somebody asked you for your autograph? I'd say sophomore year of high school. I'd, I had someone on the travel circuit ask me for my autograph at, at a ball game somewhere. Um, there are some guys that you know, are really big into baseball cards and baseball players and the amateur prospects. And after my freshman year is when I was first ranked in the top 10 mm -hmm. and I think some people noticed that and knew I had a shot to be to be pretty good and so they asked me for my autograph and, and I think that was the first time going either into freshman year or beginning of sophomore year sir. What was that feeling like from being a baseball fan to being having somebody be a fan of yours and want Walker Jenkins to sign something? It's really cool, especially when kind of the first kids ask, because that's that's where I remember being. You know, I can't say I know what it's like to be a 30-year-old a man that enjoys collecting cards. You know, right. I'm not that person. I haven't been there. But I can say what it, I know what it's been like to be that six, seven-year-old kid that just looked up to another player, um, thought it was awesome that they were there. and. Just wanted to be able to give him a fist bump, say hello, get an autograph ball, because it meant the world to me. So that that first time I was able to do that, it was it was really cool and and something I won't forget. Young child or the first fan of a of a, of a kid to come up and sign that because that's a whole different ball. Game. Yes, sir, it is. And because you can put yourself in that young player's mind. Well, you know that can for some people maybe change the whole outcome of, of the way they look at things, start treating others differently because of it. Oh, he f someone finally signed a baseball for me. You know, that just, I mean, that's the way I looked at it. You got some of these dudes that are so famous and so big now, I try to sign as many autographs as I can because I, I remember being that little kid that just wanted one person to, to say hello or, or, you know, sign a ball for you. Sure, I had, mm -hmm. a, I, I had a, a gentleman pick on me one time said I smiled more after the game watching them sign autographs than I did during mm -hmm. the game. And there's a, there's a lot of truth in that. You know, he plays the game because he loves it, and, and I enjoy watching. But as a parent, I enjoy him being a contributor to, to society and uh, making other people feel good mm -hmm. just as much. What have mom and dad done to keep you humble? And I, and I want to say humble in the fact that you've been ranked since you talked about since freshman year. Somebody has had you as this prospect. Somebody has had you as this prospect. And I imagine a normal teenager might start saying, I'm not taking out the garbage, Dad. What do you mean? Or get, you know, get somebody else to do that. How have they worked to keep you humble? It goes back to the, the way they've raised me. 
Um, and the fact that if I said that to him, he'd probably still beat my tail. So, uh, <laughs> you know, there's still a respect factor there that I've had from a young age and that I'm never going to lose for my parents. Um, they've raised me. They've molded me into the person I am today. Um, it's kind of always been, you're, you're, you're going to be humble in this family. And that's the way they raised me. You know, you're, once again, you know, no one likes someone that's cocky or thinks they're better than others. Treat others the way you want to be treated and, and act that way. So that's the way they've raised me and, and the way that they've, they've just continued to remind me along this whole process, just, you know, to continue to be that person. So when the uniform's on, he's one person, but around the house here, on Yacht Drive, he still takes out the garbage. Oh, yeah. He still cleans the boat after he uses it. Yes, sir. This is a question that I don't want to get too involved in, but I have to ask because people are going to ask and people want to know. Major League Baseball players make a lot of money. Yes, sir. Where does money rank in what Walker wants to do? Has money ever been the driver? And what you've tried to do? Not at all. I've told people I'd still be playing baseball if I wasn't going to make a cent. You know, I think it goes back to it's, it's rewarding to get that. Obviously, it is, you know, a reward, but it wouldn't matter. I've played baseball my whole life because I love it. I know I've never been paid anything, but I would continue to play because it's my favorite thing to do. And the money does not, not have any factor in, in how hard I'd work or how hard I'd play. It's always been... I want to be the best out of everyone that's played. I can think back, start fourth grade talking about teachers having to write a paper, what do you want to be when you grow up? And he said an MLB player and the AIG teacher told him that he couldn't do that and he came home and was very upset. She ended up letting him do it but I, coming home and talking to me I said, well bud you do need to have like plan B and C, you know, because things don't, we're rooting for you, we're going to do everything to help you and so I was like, let's talk about, you know, so I was like, maybe dental school would be good, you know, different, just throwing different things out there, you know, but um, he would get very upset when somebody was t tell him that he couldn't do that. When all is said and done, what do you th want people here to think about Walker Jenkins? You have been drafted, if you go in the minor leagues and you're no longer around here like you have been going to South Brunswick High School. When people say, oh, Walker Jenkins, I remember what do you want them to remember? I just want them to remember that hopefully I was a good role model, um, a good leader around here in this community for other kids my age, kids younger than me, and that, that I was just kind to other people. I want them to, to think of me as a kind person, that I'm, I'm, I don't have anyone that you know, has those images of me of, of, of not being that person. So that's the way I want people to think of me. Well, I, I thank you. I mean, I know you're tremendously busy and I appreciate you carving out 25 minutes to sit down here and talk to me about not on the field stuff I wanted to get to know the 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 young man yes sir behind the talent behind the hard work because I think personally I think that what you do in getting where you are defines you more than the hits and the base hits and I RBIs agree. and everything else like that yes sir thank you of course Thanks for taking the time Walker. thank you all we're hoping the best things for you we really we really are thank you sir appreciate it a big thank you to Walker Jenkins and also to his parents, Clay and Tana, for sparing some time and joining us for this week's podcast interview. Walker will begin his professional career by joining the Twins' single-A franchise in Fort Myers, Florida. You can follow him on social media. He's active on Twitter and on Instagram. And we're going to be following his progress as he begins this new chapter in his baseball life. Now, before we go, I'd like to ask you a favor. Please subscribe to the one-on-one -on -one with John Evans podcast or follow it on whatever app you use to listen to your favorite shows. And if you'd be so kind, please leave us a rating or a review. We really do care what you think of our interviews. And the more feedback we have from friends like you, the higher we'll be listed on the apps, the better chance we'll have of bringing in even more new listeners. I'm John Evans. Thanks so much for joining us for this episode of One on One.